Welcome to Anatomy. This is a short little game by Kitty Horror Show, and it appears that we're stuck in this unknown house. It appears we're not getting through the front door either. Now we can try every door in this house, but we'll have plenty of time to explore as the game goes on. So there's only really one place that we need to go. It appears the kitchen is open to us, and uh... Oh! Well there's something. In the psychology of the modern civilized human being, it is difficult to overstate the significance of the house. Since as early as the Neolithic era, humankind has defined itself by its buildings. Buildings for worship, buildings for socializing, buildings for protection, even buildings for the commemoration of the dead. But of all the structures that mankind has invented for itself, there is little doubt that the house is that which it relies upon most completely for its continued survival. Well, that sure was an interesting recording, and it appears that it's directing us to another room to find another tape. And that is the real gameplay mechanic of, of Anatomy. We're going to be exploring this house, looking for more tapes and listening to more recordings. But now that we have our tape, let's return to the tape player in the kitchen. The house is one of the key elements that separates modern humanity from its more primitive antecedents. No other creature goes to such lengths to create lasting, permanent shelter for itself, nor regards such shelters with such reverence and import. Why do human beings of our modern age foster this tremendous sympathy toward their homes? There are many reasons, of course, but perhaps it is due in some small part to seeing them as a reflection of ourselves. Now, by downstairs bathroom, it does mean the floor that we are currently on, and we don't have to go very far because this looks quite like a bathroom. And, oh, not quite a reflection, but that's fine. Let us return to the kitchen. The anatomy of the house is such that this analogy is less superficial than at first it may seem. To carry it further, if we were to dissect a house as we might a human cadaver, we would find ourselves able to isolate and describe its various appendages and their functions in a decidedly anatomical fashion. There is even a fair number of direct comparisons to be drawn between those organs of a house and those of a human body. That seems to be quite a macabre way of comparing a house and a human body, but in order to listen to more, we must find the next tape, and we've been directed to the garage. And one of the few things you may have noticed about this house is that it is very, very dark. But here is the tape. Let us escape this darkness and return to the kitchen. For example, let us examine the living room. Often the dominant space of a house is ground level, as well as typically the center of activity in a well-populated home, the living room is very much the heart of the house. While a human heart circulates blood to oxygenate the body's extremities, the living room circulates people, activity, communication. It is the room most likely to be found beating, as active and vivacious as its name would imply. The comparison is only strengthened when we consider also that the living room is most commonly the room to contain the fireplace, making it additionally a locus of actual physical heat. There's a bit of a pattern in some of these tapes, where a room will hear described and compared to the human body, 
is the next one on the list, and the living room, being the only spot left on the ground floor that we have not explored, would be next on the list. It appears as though the TV cannot be interacted with, but this is quite a large room, so let's have a look around. This appears to be an operating theater, perhaps? While this is maybe a dog and a cat skeleton, quite atypical living room decorations, but no matter, let us return to the kitchen. It is easy to think of the kitchen and dining room as the stomach or digestive system of a house, though this comparison is tenuous. By contrast, the function and analog of a bathroom should be immediately obvious. The hallways and corridors of the house are its veins, providing circulation coursing throughout its frame. A staircase bears more than a passing resemblance, both physically and symbolically, to a spine. The windows of a house serve much the same purpose as eyes, and anyone who has ever rounded a bend or a long drive and come suddenly face to face with a tall, dark manor will tell you that it is difficult to shake the impression that the house, through its lightless windows, is a creature capable of vision and intelligence. Now, although stairs are not necessarily a room, they were briefly mentioned on that tape. And this is the only staircase we've seen, so the tape is right here. It's a bit strange how empty these hallways are. But for now, well, you know the pattern. The bedroom is perhaps the room that most eludes direct comparison in this fashion. At a stretch, and allowing for a bit of poetic sympathy, it might be said that the bedroom is not unlike the human mind, or those parts of it which dictate thought and imagination. In the bedroom, dreams are dreamt, passions are ignited, epiphanies are experienced in cold sweat at early hours. In the bedroom is where people invariably spend the majority of their time, though comparatively little of it whilst conscious. This hint implies that there are multiple bedrooms, and since we've covered everything on the ground floor, they would have to be upstairs. So, we'll keep trying rooms until we find the correct one. It also appears as if there are several pictures of arthropods, insects, and arachnids of various different kinds. All of the doors we've tried so far have been locked, but we'll keep trying until we find the right one. There is only one more door to try, so let's hope this is the correct one. This picture appears to be of a small girl sleeping in her bedroom, dreaming. Though the bedroom we are in is much less ornate, we have our tape, so we may return. But before we get back, you may have noticed another thing about this house. It is entirely silent. There is no ambient noise whatsoever. And yet this analogy is an incomplete one, for obviously the mind is an exceedingly complex thing. If the bedroom represents the thinking, dreaming part of the brain, then it is the basement that represents those lower, unconscious parts. The basement is dark. It is buried. It is a place full of cobwebs where memories are stored. A poignant comparison, truly. Often the unnerving uncertainty that comes with considering the deeper aspects of the human psyche 
is not unlike gazing down at the swimming blackness pooled at the bottom of a basement stairwell. It is a place we spend our childhoods filling with monsters that will lay for years in patient silence. It is a place that, barring some specific errand, we seldom ever want to go. Now perhaps you heard this door unlock, meaning that this is the door to the basement. In this house, the basement is, by far, the largest and therefore the darkest room. If you look as closely as you can, you might be able to see something moving in the darkness, though that may just be your imagination. But we have our tape. There's no reason to stay here in the darkness any longer than we have to. Though sometimes it does feel as if there's something just waiting for us. But it's probably nothing. Of course, this comparison, though appropriate, is a very heavy-handed one. And often the basement is little more than a storage space, littered with the corpses of spiders and wood lice. While poets and psychoanalysts no doubt dread the thought of a dark basement, in truth, it is the bedroom, the waking mind, that place of dreams, that is actually the most frightening of all. We seem to be running out of rooms in this quite small house. And though we've investigated one bedroom before, it seems we're going after the master bedroom this time. The unique thing about the master bedroom is that, unlike any other room in this house, its walls are painted red. An odd choice, but not that unusual. Oh, and look, a tape sitting for us right on the bed. Now all we have to do is take it back to the... Well, isn't this convenient? It is here, in the bedroom, that we are at our most vulnerable. Each night we shut our senses to the world for hours at a time, trusting in the house to keep us safe until next we wake. In this state of extreme vulnerability, we will spend something like 20% of our lives. Anything might stand beside us, watch us, keep us company until dawn, and we would never perceive it. We can only pray that the house will not let such things carry on as we sleep. In this way, during these hours, the bedroom seems less like a mind and more like a mouth. For it is here that the house is most likely to betray us. It is here that we place ourselves most at the house's mercy and spend each night hoping that it will not bite down.